Hi there. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, in the next 30 minutes, sadly, um, during our chat, 39 Americans who are alive right now will be dead because of the foods that they eat. About 70% of us carry around an insurmountable amount of shame and guilt associated with our weight and our bodies when there should be no shame and no guilt because the weight gain really isn't our fault to begin with. So I'm Dr. Ashley Lucas. I'm the owner and founder of PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. I'm not a medical doctor, but I'm a PhD nutritionist and dietitian with a passionate pursuit to help people truly change their lives, drop weight and maintain the changes. We don't use expensive medications or shots or drops or even supplements. We use real food and nutrient timing to allow the body to work the way that it's supposed to. We use a holistic approach, understanding that it's not just about what and when you eat, but it's how you think, how you feel, the habits, behaviors, the mental and emotional aspect associated with this. And then we use education, understanding that it's not just the conventional dietary wisdom that you've been flooded with, but true evidence-based science to help us make long-lasting changes. So today, during our time together, we're going to talk about where we are from a health status of our nation. We're going to bust through some really fun weight loss myths. I think it's really important that you understand why weight gain isn't your fault and what we can do about it. We'll briefly go through what we do at PhD, and then I really want to give you some simple evidence-based strategies that you can implement into your life right away to improve your health. And then my favorite part is to talk about our real clients and real people and what they've done. So um, I want to respect your time. At the end of our 30 minutes together, I'm going to spend about 10 minutes answering any kind of questions that you have. You're going to be getting an email at the end of this, so make sure you check your inbox. And in that email, we're going to list some extra bonuses that you can use with us if you're ready to make a change. And then also, if I don't get to your questions, I want to make sure that you're taken care of. So just reply to that email, and we'll make sure to answer your questions that you have. So a little bit about PhD and, and my background. I was a professional ballet dancer and I danced with the Aspen Santa Fe Ballet and the Richmond Ballet for quite a few years, but I was chronically injured. And I truly believe that if I had known then what I know now about nutrition, my career would have been a lot longer. But the universe led me into a different direction. I went on and earned my PhD in sports nutrition and chronic disease. I went on after that and taught at The Ohio State University and there recognized that I have this passion to see dramatic changes within individuals. And so I went back to school again and I completed my dietetic internship at OSU. I moved with our family and my husband, he's a foot and ankle orthopedic surgeon, went to Stanford for his fellowship and that's where I put together the PhD approach. We moved to Durango, loved Durango community, and that's where we opened our flagship office, which we have there still. And we've helped thousands of people drop weight and improve their health in a sustainable way and continue to do so. Our office in Farmington, we've helped so many people reverse their type 2 diabetes in that community. And then we have our office here in Asheville. We just celebrated our year anniversary. And then we just recently last month opened in the Greenville community, and we are so excited to be a part of, of that community. So before we go on, I would like for you to take the poll, and then we're going to see how you respond. So I would like you to answer this question. What is or what are the best tools for sustainable weight loss? And then we'll come to this in a few minutes. So I want to talk about the health trends that we've seen in the United States over the last 40 or so years. And these maps are small, but you don't have to be able to read it. I'll walk you through. Let's start together on the upper left hand corner. You'll see this 1990 map. And so what this shows us is that the population was struggling at about a rate of 10 to 14 percent with obesity at that time. And we define obesity as carrying 30 pounds of excess fat weight or more on the body. 
Then we progress about 10 years. And on the upper right hand corner, you'll see this map with a new color on some of the states. And that means that with that yellow color, 20 to 24 percent of the population was struggling with obesity. Now move forward uh, another 20 years and we have to implement a new color scheme. And so here in Colorado, we're maintaining this 20 to 25 percent obesity rate. But in the other communities, the other states, it is just increasing dramatically and it's increasing in Colorado too. But this yellow color means that 25 to 30 percent of the people are struggling with obesity. Orange, 30 to 35, and that reddish color means that more than 35% of the population in those states are struggling with an excess of 30 pounds of, of fat weight on their frame or more. So this means, and I think these are important statistics to understand that 75% of us in the United States are overweight and 42% of us are obese. This equates to 88% of us being metabolically unwell. And by metabolically unwell, I mean we're struggling with type 2 diabetes or high cholesterol, high blood pressure, gout, those inflammatory conditions. And I think what's really interesting is that 25% of us who are lean or of normal healthy weight, 25% of those individuals are also metabolically unwell, struggling with the same conditions. So really that leaves only 12% of us truly being metabolically healthy. And I think given the current COVID-19 pandemic, that it's important that we talk about this because we know that you know, severe cases of COVID-19 are associated um, with chronic conditions. And the number one is obesity. We now have the statistics to show that 80% of ICU admissions with COVID-19 are associated with chronic conditions and the top two being obesity and type two diabetes. So I do not say these statistics to make us feel bad or to increase shame or guilt or worry and anxiety. We do not need any more of that right now, but I mention it because we can reframe this as an opportunity an opportunity to make changes in our health that we've probably wanted to make for a really long time, but now we have an excuse. And we can almost look at it like our civic responsibility that we can take steps toward managing our own health because then if we do come down with something, whatever it ha might happen to be, we're strong enough to overcome and we don't place excess burden on the healthcare system that's already overrun right now. And the positive thing to understand is that it's just small steps tiny steps that we can make to see huge improvements in our health. I mean, it's truly amazing that we can, you can reverse type two diabetes or high blood pressure, sleep apnea in like a matter of weeks. So tiny changes make huge changes in our health. So now we're going to go through the results of the poll. Let me share that with you. So um, what we looked at was to determine if you think it's calories restriction that leads to sustainable weight loss or exercise, eating everything in moderation or willpower. And it looks like in general, you think that eating everything in moderation is the key to sustainable weight loss. So let's talk about these for a minute. Bear with me. So the first one is that we've been told we need to, in general, move more and eat less. Right. We've been told that calories in and calories out equate to either weight gain or weight loss. And I'm here to tell you that weight gain is much more complicated than just calories in and calories out. You are not a simple equation. So in general, we've been told to exercise, and I see that you really don't think that exercise is the key to weight loss. So that's great. But, you know, from a science standpoint, it's interesting. You would have to um, run 350 miles or cycle 1,000 miles to burn just 10 pounds of fat. Um, there was a study that came out and it looked at four tightly controlled inpatient studies and from a calories in and out standpoint had them move more. And so you would think that they would all drop about 10 pounds. Well, no one dropped 10 pounds. The average person dropped seven and there was a big group that dropped two to three. And now we're finding that genetics have a lot to do with how we respond to exercise. And some people just genetically do not drop weight through more movement. Now, leading an active lifestyle is, of course, important. I'm just talking about trying to burn calories through exercise. 
then we've been told that we need to eat less. And you know, when we severely restrict our calories, we can do a lot of harm to our metabolism. Uh, you know, the biggest loser show on TV where they have these individuals exercise day and night and not eat very much. Well, they looked at their resting metabolic rate and the resting metabolic rate is the number of calories that you burn doing nothing, just sitting on the couch, doing nothing. And so they measured the resting metabolic rate of these contestants before the show and after the show and their resting metabolic rate dropped by about 800 calories. They retested it six years later and their metabolism hadn't resolved or improved yet. So we can do a lot of damage. And when we truly look at the science and the literature of severe caloric restriction, we see continuous weight regain. It's unsustainable, increased feelings of anxiety and depression. And it's just not the way to go for the majority of us. Then we're told that we need to have more willpower. And I'm also here to tell you that a heavier individual does not have less willpower than a leaner person. It has nothing to do with personality, discipline, or willpower. It's truly a metabolic dysfunction and specific foods that we're eating that is leading to binging and overeating. And then the everything in moderation. You know, I personally do not like this phrase because I think it's caused a lot of issues in our society. We're expected to eat everything in moderation. Well, I can tell you that um, I can't eat everything in moderation and my husband can't either. And, um, you know, I don't think we're really abnormal, just uh, maybe a little bit. But I mean, if we have if I have cookie dough ice cream in the freezer, I will eat it and not just a scoop. I'll probably eat the whole carton. And I'd say that that's pretty normal. Uh, my husband, he doesn't even look at the ice cream. But if there's tortilla chips and salsa in the pantry, I know where to find him until it's all gone. So the thing is, is that we have to be aware that we're all unique and we all have our own trigger foods. And if I were to ask you what your trigger food is, I bet you know, and if you don't, you might be in denial because I'd say the majority of us have those and eating in moderation is just unfair to expect us to do all the time. So I wanna talk a little bit about visceral fat. I think this is one of the most important things that I'm going to share with you today. So the visceral fat is not the fat that we can pinch. It's in the belly. It's not the stuff that nowadays we melt or laser or cool sculpt or do all these different things with. It's the fat that's deep down in the organs. It fills up the organs. It's thick. It wraps around them. If you see this picture up here on your screen, the picture on the right hand side is the picture of a heart when we're carrying uh, visceral fat. We want our heart to look like the picture on the left hand side. So what happens is we have generally these triggers in our life and we'll learn more about you when you come in to chat with us or when we schedule an initial consultation. However, there's these triggers and they change the way that our metabolism works. So for a lot of us, we can continue to eat the way we did in the past, but now it results in weight gain and we're thinking, what the heck? It just doesn't make sense. I'm still eating everything in moderation. I'm moving, I'm watching things, but it's just packing on and it comes on in the belly. Well, the metabolism has shifted. You haven't done anything wrong or different, but the body's different. And so now this visceral fat packs in there. If you have belly fat and we were to take a slice of your liver, it would look like a Kobe beef steak. Imagine that, that marbling in there. So now this stuff gets in there, it wraps around the organs and it grows its own blood vessels. It gets a little oxygen supply going for it and now it secretes all these different hormones. So what you've accumulated in the belly is actually this really metabolically active fat tissue that has its own agenda. It secretes all these different hormones that we can get into at a later time, but the objective here for you to understand is that it makes you hungry, it makes you crave, it makes you uh, lazy when you're and you're not a lazy person, but it's the last thing the fat mass wants you to do is go expend a ton of energy. And it slows your metabolism so you can look at a piece of pizza and gain five pounds from it. So this weight gain, that's why I say it's not your fault. It's all metabolically driven by this fat mass. It's like a tumor in there and it just wants to get fatter as fast as possible. And this is why for a lot of us, you drop weight only to regain it. Let's say you have this 50 pound active fat mass in there, like a tumor, and you drop 30 pounds. Well, that's gonna feel a lot better. And you might think, you know what, this is fine. I'm done exercising like crazy or restricting myself. I'm just gonna maintain this. Well, you won't. 
because you still have 20 pounds of this stuff left in there working against you and your risk of relapse is so high. So it's not that you have failed your previ previous diet dieting attempts, it's that these antiquated methodologies have failed you and we truly didn't get the body where it needed to be. So we're gonna talk briefly about what we do, but what we do is very specific to you. It is customized to you and your story, your history, where you've been and where you wanna go. So the best bet is to come in and chat with us or chat with us over the phone or by video um, if you aren't local to us or if you feel more comfortable staying at home. But I want to give you an idea of what things look like. And so what we do from a science perspective is we create a metabolic shift in the body. This allows for you to not be hungry. You will not have cravings. You will feel so good, better energy, sleep better. I'm not gonna say that it's a cure-all, but you're gonna feel a lot better pretty darn quickly. So what happens is right now, the majority of us, because of what we've been told to eat, we're carb burners. And when we burn carbohydrates, we use insulin. And insulin is this fat storage inflammatory hormone, and you do not want insulin. Everyone agrees, we do not want insulin to be high in the body. When we have high insulin, we produce free radicals as a byproduct, and those are linked to a whole host of negative health consequences. It's like this wood burning, fire that you can see this picture up here. It's sooty. There's lots of nasty byproducts. It's dirty. You have to shove wood in there all the time or else the fire goes out. That's why right now a, a lot of you have to eat every three to four hours or you get hangry. <laughs> you know. So instead, we want to teach the body how to burn fat. This is not a keto way of eating. You can still eat carbohydrate. Everybody is different. We have to figure out what your body needs to allow it to get into this safe, sweet state. And once we get the body into fat burn, it feels great. It's like this propane um, fireplace where it's clean, the energy is much more endless. Nearly every cell in the body prefers to burn fat for fuel. We're just not letting it because of what we're eating or what we've been told to eat or what we're doing with a, from a lifestyle component. So the benefits of becoming fat adapted extend far beyond just weight loss. Our ultimate goal is to reduce energy or reduce inflammation, increase energy. And as a result, we can see a lot of these conditions go away. Um, fatty liver, we can resolve pretty darn quickly. We can see improvements in blood pressure and lipid panels. We work a lot with athletes um, who want to enhance their performance. And you know, another name for Alzheimer's disease is now type three diabetes. So a little bit more about us is that what our ultimate goal is, is to fully collapse the active fat mass and get your body to its unique place where you are actually going to be able to maintain your weight loss with much more ease. We create this metabolic shift so that you feel good. It's easy, it's simple, anybody can do it, any age, any gender, any um, dietary preference, you can do it if you want to and it's simple. Um, you're supported by a team of experts, and I think this is really important for you to understand that everybody on the team is highly trained in what we do. Uh, I oversee everything, and we have a PhD advisory board where we have, we have Dr. Doug Lucas. He is our chief science officer and makes sure everything that we do is supported by the most up-to-date research and current literature. And we have Dr. Feinerman, and she has her PhD in psychology and is available to our clients for elevated coaching on that behalf, and also coaches our coaches and helps to train us in our cognitive behavioral work. Like I mentioned earlier, we really focus on you as a person. It's not just about the science. We have that. We're experts on that. But it's how you're thinking and how you're feeling. And then we also are aware that for the majority of our clients, we're not in the field of weight loss, but we're in the field of addiction recovery. And that's how we go about everything we do. And we never leave your side. We understand that from a recovery standpoint, maintenance support is the key and we never abandon you. Um, and so uh, all the resources are available to you for free once you enter into the state of maintenance and we're there for you. So if you pop up, there's no shame in that, but we can error correct early on and get you back where you need to be. And no matter what, we're not leaving your side. So um, the next question is if you're a candidate to work with us, 
we don't work with everybody. Um, success requires commitment, 100% dedication to making a change. You've got to be at this threshold where you are done with where you are and you are ready to move into a different direction. You know, we're successful because of our expertise and the support and accountability and and everything that we provide. So it's really not if the program's going to work for you, it's if you're willing to work it. And when you are ready, the results are outstanding and we're just here to guide you, support you and figure out metabolically what's going on. So really you've got to enter in with your whole mind, your whole heart, bring your A game and then it is so much fun really. So everything we do, like I mentioned, is based on evidence and science. So I want to give you some strategies from a dietary and behavioral component that you can implement right away. So in general, eating lower glycemic index carbohydrates is a good, good rule of thumb. Whenever you eat a carb, you want to have fiber attached to it. Higher fiber, lower sugar, like green leafies, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, if you cannot tolerate these vegetables or you don't like them, that's okay. We can still get around that. But in general, if you do love them, eat those. Reducing the grains, even the whole grain, uh, whole wheat variety is a good habit to start to implement. Never eat anything fat free or low fat. I want you to eat real foods. So if you're going to choose a yogurt, I would prefer a full fat Greek yogurt if you can tolerate dairy. There are so many yogurts out there. And just to let you know that those um, fruit sweetened yogurts, even if it's whole fruit in there that you buy at the grocery store has just as much sugar as Haagen-Dazs ice cream. And from my story earlier, I sure would choose the Haagen-Dazs ice cream. Um, and then adding uh, fats to your meals. We really like, you know, butter or MCT oil or uh, my favorite is first cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. Avocado oil is a really great oil to cook with at high heat temperatures. And then genetically, we all tolerate fats differently. So some of us can get away with a good amount of saturated fat while others of us have to watch that. So adding in those healthy oils and then don't drink your carbs. This means, of course, soda, but juices, even um, the best juice that you can think of, it is gonna have a lot of sugar in there. And then we can talk about alcohol more. You can drop weight and still consume alcohol if you need to, um, but beer can cause some belly fat in there. I'm just gonna tell you the truth. <laughs> um, beer is kind of like liquid bread, so you wanna watch for that. So in general, eating real whole foods in their natural form is a good rule. And then make sure you have support. You know, 95% of diets we do on our own fail. Uh, we hit these plateaus because it's complicated, both scientifically, metabolically, and behaviorally. So you need a support team behind you. You need someone to hold you accountable. Record your food, monitor your weight. Don't weigh yourself too often, maybe once a week. Look at your physical activity and just make sure you're recording that down. Accept the fact that sabotaging thoughts and triggers are gonna enter in. It's a part of this process of letting go and it's okay, accept those. And then recognize when you're hungry and when you're full and when you really get into the state of fat burn, you can start to trust your body. It's gonna tell you when it's hungry. It's not gonna be a scary hunger anymore. And then just understanding that mastery never ends. Even when we get to maintenance, we're still mastering, we're still creating and moving forward into a positive direction. So now um, this is my favorite part. Let's just talk about some of um, our clients and our family. So this is Teresa and I like to share her story because she went through her weight loss phase about four years ago and she's still maintaining today. She dropped 74 pounds in these 28 weeks while going through multiple major foot surgeries. If you look at her before and afters, you can see that she had um, little wedges between her toes and then a little boot on her right foot at the end. So she went through it, but she hit her optimal weight of 120 to 120 and is doing amazing in maintenance. We have Dick and his story is so great because he was a very bad type two insulin dependent diabetic. And when I talked to his endocrinologist, she said he's a heart attack waiting to happen and he'll never be able to drop his meds, but we did it together and we got him off of insulin. 
He's on no more medications. And we found his sweet spot to be around 170 to 175. You know, he dropped 36 pounds, which is great, but it's not a huge amount of weight. So really it was the shift we created in the body metabolically that allowed him to reverse his diabetes. And then we have Peggy, and Peggy is similar to Dick. She um, was a very bad type two insulin dependent uh, diabetic, and she has polycystic ovarian syndrome, which increases your risk for type two diabetes. And she was on insulin for 31 years, and after 12 weeks, no more insulin, and maintaining this 130 to 135. And then we have Rochelle, she's a mom of three, and she just came in and was ready to do something about herself felt that if she could get her body where it needed to be, she would be able to do more um, and be more interactive with her kids. And man, she just hit it out running and she dropped 73 pounds in 29 weeks and maintaining within that 130 to 135 um, weight. We have Jason, I just had to include him because I just think that he looks amazing. And he came in and was just at threshold and dropped 90 pounds in about 29 weeks and maintaining great. And we, we just love Jason. <clears throat> and then this is Lauren. So she started with us about two years ago in Farmington. And she um, is a registered nurse and came to us because she thought she was going to have to have a knee replacement because of the pain in her knee and she felt she was too young to need that and then most of all felt sugar addicted totally out of control well she dropped down to her optimal weight of 135 to 140 has no more pain in her knee and feels in control and she texted me this picture about two weeks ago when i asked for it and this is her living her active lifestyle two years later maintaining with ease and then this is Phil. So I love Phil because he came in and said, you know, oh, we have our before and after pictures in our offices. And he scoffed at them and was like, I don't need to drop anything but maybe five pounds. And if you're able to get me off my high blood pressure medications, then I'm going to wear a big sandwich board and walk up and down Henderson Phil Road, which is this really busy road outside of the Asheville office. Well, I'm happy to say that he blasted through that five, 10 pounds he thought he needed to drop and ended right where his body wanted him to be. And um, although he it did reverse his blood pressure, he didn't put a sandwich board on his body. However, he's letting me use his story. And he goes on cruises and he'll, you know, before all of this happened and he'll pop up a bit, but he understands what he needs to do and what he needs to eat to get his body back where it needs to be. So he said, what I learned is once I became fat adapted and I became accustomed to eating the PhD way, it was really simple to stay on course and to lose all where the weight that he needed to. And this is Tammy Jones. She's famous in all of our communities pretty much. And you might hear her on the radio, but she has done everything, including bariatric surgery. And um, she just committed and, her journey is amazing and she's down 58 pounds in 25 weeks. And so, you know, if there's a takeaway from this talk, I hope it's that you understand that your weight gain isn't your fault. It has nothing to do with your personality, yet it's a metabolic situation you've been given for one reason or another that you really can overcome if you want to. And I stand here because I really care and I know there's hope, not just for you, but for our communities to be stronger and to be healthier. And now it's your turn to make a decision. If you're ready to let go of this weight, the emotions that are tied to it and can and ball into a new direction. So watch it for your email. Um, you're going to get that email from us with some bonuses to help support you in making this change if you're ready. And then also, if I'm not able to answer your questions in the next 10 minutes, just respond to that email and we'll get you taken care of. OK, so just a minute here. OK, so the first question is, how much does this program cost? And that's a great question that we get. Um, so the cost of the program is really dependent upon your unique needs. And that's why it's really important that we chat with you. It's different for each person. And so um, the best bet is to 
come in and see what we do and what it would look like for your specific body. If you have specific questions on costs that I'm unable to answer with this, then please email us. And if we know more about you, then maybe we can help you in a more specific way. But the best bet is to just chat with us and we will tell you exactly what the cost, what the investment would be, what the length of your program would be to get you into maintenance. Um, so the next question is, where are our coaches um, trained? So we have our own certification program within PhD, but also you can go to our website and we have a list of all of our team who are amazing. We have board certified nutritionists, naturopathic doctors, addiction recovery specialists. The majority of our team have masters in health, wellness, exercise. We have elite athletes who are experts in sports nutrition. So just go on the website to take a look at that. Um, can I drink alcohol? That's a great question too. So you can. If you need to drink alcohol, you definitely can. It can slow your progress for some people. And then, like I said, you know, beer is going to be a big challenge, but you can't. It's going to go faster, of course, if you let it go. And you can let it go for a few weeks and then bring it back. But if you don't want to do that, I understand it's summer and a stressful time, so we can get around that if you need to. Uh, the next question is, is it super restrictive? So there are going to be foods that you focus on and there are going to be foods that you don't, but nothing is permanent. Everything is short term to figure out truly what your body needs. And it's also about breaking the ties with the foods you say you love that are not loving you back. Sometimes it's like this dysfunctional relationship. So we'll go through all of that. But if there's a specific food that you really can't let go of, you'll let us know and we'll help you. It's about this being fun and simple and as easy as possible, but there is work involved, right? You've got to be ready to make a change. Um, the next question is, can you work with vegans and vegetarians? And of course we can. We can do all plant-based if that's your preference. Um, we can work with any type of allergy or sensitivity. You just let us know and we'll customize your meal plan to support your preferences and your needs. So next question, uh, do you take insurance? So we do not directly work with insurance, but what we can do is we can write you a letter that you can submit to your insurance provider, all coded appropriately for your specific needs, and then they will let you know if they would reimburse you. And I'm so sorry that can't be more clear, but I would say go into it with the expectation that insurance doesn't cover it. And we will do everything we can to help you with those codes. And if they do cover it, then man, it's like this amazing gift from the heavens. And you should take that and feel really fortunate. Um, what if I don't live near a physical location? That's the next question. So we have a very sophisticated nationwide at home program that we've been doing for about five years. So we would just schedule you to do your initial consultation. We have a very great video telemedicine platform so we can see one another directly, but we can also do it over the phone. And our at-home clients do just as amazing as our local in-person um, clients. Next question, can you do couple consultations? We love that, that's our preference. Um, even if you don't have a partner or spouse who might be participating in the program, I'd say bring them in because it's a big decision and you want to have their support. And for couples, we can see you both at the same time. Um, you know, sons and fathers, mothers and daughters. We love that you have an extra support system there. And if you can do it with someone else, then it's just going to ensure even greatest, greater uh, chance of success. You know, I didn't mention it, but 95% of our clients achieve their optimal weight. And of those who participate in maintenance, 85% um, maintain within three pounds. So if you have a family member or someone who can support you or do it with you, we love that. And we provide a discount for our couples who are working together. Um, next question is, can you take, uh, can you use HSA and FSA cards, health savings account? And yes, definitely we can do that. Okay. Any more questions? I think that's it. Well, yeah, again, I just want to thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. I hope you got some benefit and I wish you the best and everything you're going forward with and, and good luck. Thank you so much.